I am still getting this question, why did I stop foster care, being a foster parent, and why am I now doing the IVF to surrogacy process journey to become a father and have a biological child? I'm gonna break it down in this video. It won't be super long, but I wanna address it again for everybody watching and catch everybody up. Let's go, let's go. So once again, if you have not followed me for very long or you've jumped onto my channel recently, you probably are seeing two different playlists. Uh, one is my adoption journey and one is a newer one, my IVF surrogacy journey. I'm gonna break down everything to you guys on why I decided to stop being a foster parent and why I'm now doing the IVF and surrogacy process. So about a year ago now, so it's August, so August of 2020, I started the process of fostering to adopt a child. I wanted to be a father and still want to be a father and was like, let's do the foster care process. Originally, I was gonna do private adoption, but a lot of people told me about foster care and that it was a really good thing and I should do that. So as I dove into that, got more information, researched, I realized that foster care was a really empowering thing to do and you're helping kids and it would be, it'd be wonderful. So I started the process, got registered, got licensed, I took all the classes. By February of 2021, I was placed with my first child, baby S, and he uh, was this wonderful, spunky baby boy. Uh, he had, he was seven weeks old when I got him, he was tiny, and I did everything for him. All the doctor's visits, you know, figuring out the best formula, dealing with colic, up all night. I was a single dad, you know, just doing the thing as best as I could by myself. While I had baby S, I was placed with another child. Uh, his name was baby L and I had him for only a week. He was only one month old. So I had these two infants, uh, baby S, I think was three months at that time and then baby L who was only a month by myself, like by myself. Uh, and baby L ended up leaving my home because of complications with what DCFS had told me about his case. He left within a week of being with me. Baby L ends up leaving, I have baby S. His case starts ramping up uh, with his half brother and that foster family. Everything got really confusing. DCFS was lying to me. Uh, my agency was really welcoming and loving. I used an outside agency, Aviva Family and Children Services. I will always recommend them. I think they are wonderful, loving people. If you're interested in foster care, check them out in Hollywood. But, and long story short, um, in May, Baby S was then taken and moved to his foster, to a different foster home that had the half brother. There was so many complications, so many lies from DCFS, straight up just bold faced lies to me that I found out from the other foster family. If you wanna know more about that, I have a video in the playlist. I'll put it up on the screen somewhere or one of the cards. So you can check that out. Down the road, um, I, I, baby L, you know, he leaves, it was heartbreaking. I vlogged that entire week of what it was like leading up to giving him away. There was a lot of tears. That video is out there for you guys to see because I think it's important for people to see that people that go through foster care, the parents that are taking care of these children, they do see themselves at the, as that child's parent because you are, their life is in your hands and you love them as your own. Uh, it is a very vulnerable, very difficult thing. Till this day, months later, I still think about him. I still think about him and I still love him and will always. It is now August, he left in May. I have never heard from this, the social worker who said she would keep me updated on him. I've never heard from the foster family that now has him about how he's doing. He's about six months old, older than six months now, turning seven months, and I just don't know anything about how he's doing. After he left, DCFS um, wanted to place four more children with me. Uh, they would call me 
in the morning, say we're bringing a child by all infants, or they'd say, can you go to the hospital and pick up this child? Then they, I'd say yes. Every time I'd say yes. And they then said, um, they wouldn't call me for a couple hours. I was expecting calls back from them for information on when they'd be at my house or which hospital to go to. And they would just not call me back. It was me having to call them and ask them what's going on, only to be told that we decided to go with another family. DCFS um, is sneaky. Everyone knows it. This is not new. Uh, the Los Angeles uh, Department of Children and Family Services is, is the largest DCFS, um, the largest county with foster care in the entire uh, country. Like it's, it's insane. So here's where all the things with IVF and surrogacy start. I had never wanted to do IVF. First off, I have four brothers, three brothers. I'm one of four. I have three brothers. They all have children. My name will be passed on. My bloodline will be passed on. I'm not worried about that. The reason I never cared to do IVF was because I was I was too a little bit too concerned with my obsession obsessiveness around would I be able to trust a woman to carry my child? Uh, would I be freaking about what she's eating every day? Is she working out? Is she staying healthy? Is she doing drugs? Is she doing things that you shouldn't be doing when you're pregnant? Um, all those types of things. I would just be worried. And then, so I, I decided like that's never going to be the route for me. But something about foster care taught me that I can actually do this. I think the process of going through foster care, being a foster parent, and the amount of control that you do not have, you can't even leave the county of Los Angeles with that foster child without getting a court approval from a judge stating that it's okay to take the child out of the county. That's how intense it is. So I learned that I'm, I, I'm simply not in control of everything. And somehow, I don't know how, but it translated into IVF. Or maybe it was the desire to be a parent got even stronger after doing it, that I knew I needed to be the one to make the decisions and not have a judge and lawyers and social workers all make decisions based off of me and the child I'm caring for. I didn't know much about it, but I knew I could do the research and I could find out. So my partner, Alex, had, I guess, I don't know if he knew about this place already or was doing his own research and he found this place in Mexico um, where they do it's an agency that does IVF and surrogacy and they do it all in Cancun and it's far cheaper than doing it here. The cost of surrogacy and IVF in California is between one and $200,000. In Cancun, which is known for its medical uh, treatments and the, and the resources that they have in Cancun around medical services, it's only gonna cost me about $50,000 to do this, to do everything from the beginning processes all the way to the birth of the child. I looked into it and I said, this is, this is what I need to do. So that's when I started this journey. That's when I got the GoFundMe together. If you guys look in the description, there's the GoFundMe link. If you see in my videos, I've mentioned GoFundMe. On my Instagram, I've mentioned GoFundMe. I'm raising money to make this happen. It is expensive regardless, 50 grand is still 50 grand. Um, now, I also talk about the fact that I'm a real estate agent. You know, SoCal has a lot of really expensive real estate. There's two ways to help this journey. I'm creating a lot of content for everyone, right? Um, if you watch this content and you consume this content, all I ask is to just help support this journey. There's really two ways you can do it. One, you can donate on the GoFundMe. Even one dollar, just one dollar, just call it a symbolist, a symbolism, a, sim, a symbolic gift or something of showing your love. Or two, um, you can share these videos, like just share the videos or let a friend know that might be passionate about IVF and helping LGBTQ people become parents. You can, oh, another way, if you know someone moving to California, or if you know someone who lives in California and they're looking to rent an apartment or they're looking to buy a new home or sell their home, I can help them do that. And 
obviously, you know, I make my commissions and that money I'm making from commissions, yes, goes to bills, but I'm also saving money. You know, some people don't agree with doing GoFundMe for IVF. And I think those people don't realize the struggles that LGBTQ people go through to have children and how costly, it's just how costly it is. And we're not all millionaires in this world. There's nothing wrong with helping people with becoming a parent, even if it's donating some money. Um, there are plenty of people doing it and those that have, that have supported, I, I thank you. Um, it's all going toward the journey. And I'm also funding this. So where I'm at now is continuing to save my own money, continuing to work really hard, continuing to get donations through GoFundMe. Um, I have until October to raise the first $17,300 for the IVF um, treatments. So this is broken up in stages. There's like the first stage is going to get the semen analysis, which I've done, and they have told me I have good swimmers, we're ready to rock and roll. Uh, so now the agency needs me to plan the process of coming down to Cancun. It's about a four or $500 plane ticket. Go down to Cancun, I'm there for three to five, three to four days, and I will do, I think it's one to three different um, semen uh, deposits, basically, and they will take that and then inseminate the egg that I pick. But I have until October to do that before I have to start this process over because the semen analysis where they analyze your fertility uh, is only good for three months. So I'm working really hard and I am continue pushing people to support this process. That's where I'm at right now. Um, I think foster care is a wonderful, wonderful um, thing. I think foster care is, is needed and I think everyone should try foster care. Try getting information about it. If that works for you, try the process of getting certified. If that works for you, try taking in one kid. If that works for you, take in another kid. But at any point in that process, when you decide that you can no longer do it anymore, stop. And people will have opinions. People will say you shouldn't have stopped. People will probably say you shouldn't foster. People will say you shouldn't do GoFundMe. But you have to take care of yourself and you have to own the things that you do in life. That's what I'm always working on doing. Owning the things that I'm doing in life and, and being unapologetic about it and not being afraid to talk about it. So I thank you everyone, everyone who's supported, everyone who's followed. It means the world to me. Um, just thank you so much. Thank you for donating. The link to donate for the GoFundMe is in the description below. Um, and if you have clients, all my contact information is in the description of this video as well. So I love you all. Thank you so much. I'm so excited. I know I have so much faith that one day I'm going to be able to show you guys a little baby, a little baby Kevin. <laughs> it chips me out still. So thank you. I love you. Peace out.